Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel as always. If you are new to this channel, my name is Liman, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to file I-129F. First of all, I am not an attorney. I am here to help you based on experience I have with this form and also based on the instruction that comes with it. I just wanna let you know that I filed this form for my spouse as well, and uh, as a US citizen, I filed on 130 and then I filed I-129F. As soon as I filed I-129F, they approved my I-130. So this is my short story. I hope it will help you and uh, make your uh, immigration journey less stressful. So let's get started. Uh, first stop right here is just for uh, USCIS use only. Do not touch it. So just go here with where, where start here. Type or branch in blank in black ink i just want to talk about this i always do please do not sign it with a blue pen or any other color it has to be black they see black if you sign it with other color they will reject it your petition so don't do that i'm gonna see that again don't do that black ink so let's get started part one information about you is about the petitioner the person filing this petition is gonna be a u.s citizen if you are a U.S. citizen by choice, which is a naturalization, you will have alien number registration. However, if you're born in this country by birth, you don't have a number. So I'm going to show you that. If you go to your uh, certificate, uh, naturalization certificate, this is your A number right here. A lot of people miss that one. I don't know why. It's right here. You have it. So go ahead and write it down. So I'm going to write just a fake one. 111 uh, USCIS online account number if any if you find a petition before you have it if you don't you don't have it period the only one you're gonna have this uh, USCIS online account if you filled a petition before if not just forget it you don't have it uh, social security number yes you do and uh, everybody does you can do nothing without it so as I said we're gonna this time we're gonna do for a uh, fiance k1 visa i already made a video for k3 visa so that's why i'm doing for k1 visa so if you are filing to classify your spouse as a k3 uh, as a k3 visa have you filled form i-130 so uh, 4b and 5 they're gonna apply for us you're gonna leave him like that now full name it's a baker and a uh, given name is robert middle name you can leave it blank or in a I would prefer per in a so other name it's been used in my case no you can leave him uh, blank or in a mailing address it's Baker Robert uh, street name is 105 Robert run Indianapolis Uh, Indianapolis is city, just Robert Run. City or town is Indianapolis. Uh, state is going to be Indiana. And the zip code is 46221. Uh, AG and AH, it does not work for us. For the United States, we have a state. We don't have a province and we have a zip code instead of postal code so is your kind of meaning address the same as your physical address is for me it's yes uh what, what's gonna happen over here input the zip code we did already so is your kind of meaning address the same as your physical address in my case is yes if you answer no you gotta provide the physical address in item number 9a to 9h this is number 9a to 9h so we're not gonna do anything over here so it's the same so they told you right here you have to provide your uh, your last physical address for five years so so physical address address number two it's uh, 110 one the flower DR is Indianapolis as well. It's 
state is Indiana. Zip code is 46244. Uh, 11F and 11G does not work for us. Start, start date is from uh, 01, 01, 20, 10. To zero one zero one twenty twenty one. So this is last five years. Now we're gonna start. If you need more, if you need to add more, you have the extra sheet, uh, the additional information sheet. So we're gonna add it. So in my case, it's five years. It's more than five years. So we're gonna go now. Your employment history. So the first thing you're gonna do. It's your employer name. An example, uh, full name of employer is ATA. It's an example. That's my preview company. His name, it's uh, 100, Park 100. He's in Indianapolis. Uh, state is Indiana. And the zip code is 46251. Uh, your occupation is engineer. I'm not going to specify electrical engineer. Employment it was uh, from 01 2018. Uh, employment date uh, and date uh, to present. You can leave it blank. And then you, when you print it, this is what most people, you know. Uh, make a mistake they put the date today's date for example when you file the form a leave it blank when you print it when you print it put to present by pen black pen as you see it again put it to present by a black pen if you have another employer number two you can add it right here if you don't leave it blank or in a uh, part we're still talking about part Part one, information about you, the petitioner. Uh, talking about the start date, so it does not work for us. Uh, mail, date of birth is 01-01-1980. Matter status is single. Since you, you want to bring your fiance, you're going to marry when you come to the United States. Uh, city or town of village of birth is Kenefra, in my example. And the province, or is Kenefra, same thing. Uh, and the country is Morocco. Information now about your parents. You're gonna talk about your dad and mom. It doesn't matter which one you go first, you go with first. In my example, I'm gonna go with uh, family day. It's Baker, it's my dad. Uh, first name, it's uh, Ali. Uh, middle name, it does not have it. You can leave it blank or in A. Date of birth is 01-01-1935. He's a male. A country of birth is Morocco. It's Kenifra. Country of residence, Morocco. Going to go to the next. Uh, parents number, uh, parents information, parents two, number two information. So my, it's my mom, it's uh, Baba. And uh, first name is Fatima. Middle name, you can leave it blank or in A. Uh, date of birth is 01-01-1950. He's a female. Country of birth is Morocco. City, town, village of residence is Kenifra. Country of residence is Morocco. Have you have you ever been previously married? In my case, no. If you do, you gonna if you answer yes, you're gonna you're gonna add uh, your uh, previous spouses right here. So in my case, no. So your citizenship information, you are a US citizen through Select 1. 
birth in the United States, in my case, in naturalization? Have you obtained certification of naturalization or certificate of citizenship in your, in, in your own name? Yes. Now, if you answered yes to item number 41, complete the item 42A to 42, 42C. Certification number, you're going to go right here. This is your certification number right here. 24. It's uh, 24. Uh, place of issuance is Indianapolis. And date of issuance is 01. 01-2010 Have you ever filled form I-29-F for any other beneficiary? Don't lie in that one. If you did, please say yes. In my case, I'm not going to say yes for learning purposes now. No. If you answer yes, you're going to provide this alien number. If, they are, if they've been approved, you're going to provide all this information right here about uh, the beneficiary that you applied. Uh, I-29-F. Uh, F. So if you 44 to 46, what, uh, what action? Do you have any children under age of 18? No. If you answer yes, you're going to provide them right here. How many? And ages? Provide all U.S. state and foreign countries in which you have resided since 18th birthday. Is in my case just Indianapolis. I'm sorry, Indiana. And uh, the country is USA. Provide all US state and foreign countries. I'm sorry, and foreign countries, nothing over here. They said provide all US state and foreign countries in which you reside since the 18th birthday. Yeah, that one is Morocco. Sorry. You're going to add this one right here. You're going to add USA as well. We don't have a state. Here, you can do this. Provide all US state and foreign countries in which you have reside since the I chain. So you can do this one here and you do right here USA. I think it will be better to match USA. And you go over here and you do okay, I'm sorry, Morocco, that's the state. Here in 51A, what are you gonna do right here in uh when you go to additional page, right here, instead of state is a province, 51A, you're going to do the province. In my example, it's going to be Kinefra because there is no state in my country. It's going to be Kinefra. So this is true. I lived since my 18th birthday. I lived in, in Morocco and I lived in the United States. So yeah, true. I lived in Indiana, USA, and I lived in Kinefra, Morocco. So the country is Morocco and the states, we don't have a state. So we're gonna correct this because it, it depends on your country. If you have a state, but you're not gonna have it right here. So you have to add this in additional page. So now part two is information about your beneficiary. So that's your fiance. Now we're gonna talk about the fiance. My fiance, it's, it's uh, Kara. last name and uh, first name is Sarah Sarah uh, middle name she does not have it uh, middle name you can leave it blank or an A A number she does not have it US social security number she does not have it date of birth it's 01 01 22 uh, I'm sorry 2000 she's a female uh, she's single it she's from Morocco as well Country of birth is Morocco as well. Country of citizenship is Morocco. Other names used. She doesn't use any other names. You can uh, write NA or leave them blank. Information about your beneficiary. Mailing address is going to be a foreign address. A lot of people miss that one. 
it's what's going on lousy ladder over here what's going on where i go and care of name yeah Kara, Sarah, street name is one, it's 100, hi, El, Ma, Sierra, uh, city, it's Kinefra, uh, state, we don't have it, zip code, we don't have it, but we have a province, which is Kinefra, and the postal code is 50, uh, 54,000. And the country is Morocco. Now we're going to talk about your beneficiary uh, address history. So physical address is going to be the same. Provide your beneficiary uh, beneficiaries physical address for the last five years. You, if you, this does not, if you need more space, you're going to uh, use the additional page, additional information page in part eight. So it's one. What is this? Uh, that's mailing address. So we're gonna do that. One hundred. Yes, can you throw? Uh, can you throw? Postal code is fifty-four thousand. The country is Morocco. And from birth to present, from 0, 01, 0, 01, uh, 2000, uh, it's gonna be from birth to present. So, so beneficial. So we're not gonna use this. It's more than five years. So this one, it can leave it blank or in a. I would, I would prefer put in a, but a lot of people, leave. I leave it blank. For in my case, I live for I one thirty and twenty nine F. I I left it blank. So now your beneficial employer history. In my case, not employed. So the other stuff will be uh, from 16 to 19B is going to be left blank because she's not employed. Uh, part two, information about your beneficiary continued. Employer two, she's not employed. Information about your beneficiary parent now. We're going to talk about the dad's mom of the beneficiary. So is uh, Kiara AA? Hey, hey, I'm gonna put AA. Hey. It's Boo. Middle name. You can leave it blank or in A. Date of birth is 01 01 1975. Is a male. Uh, country of birth is Morocco. It's Kinefra. They are from the same city. Country of residence is Morocco. I'll talk about the parent uh, parents information number two, which is a mom. Is a KK. First name. It's Bal. Baya, middle name is blank, date of birth is 01, 01, 19, 80, she's a female, country of birth is Morocco, city is Morocco, country of residence is Morocco, So, other information about your beneficiary. Has your beneficiary ever been previously married? Hey, do not guess as a petitioner, do not guess this. You're gonna talk to your fiance and see. Do not lie. If she's been married before, you're gonna say yes. If not, say no. In my case, is no. She's still single. If you answer yes, you're gonna answer the question from uh, uh, 35A to 36. Date of marriage. Has your beneficiary ever been in the United States? In my case, is no. If you answer yes, you're gonna you're gonna answer question. You're gonna complete uh, questions item numbers A thirty eight A to thirty eight H. 
through here. Does your beneficiary have any children? In my case, no. If you see yes, this is where you provide children. This called a K2 visa for children. So your fiance is gonna be a K1 visa. Your children, your children's fiance is gonna be a K2 visa. So in my case, she does not have no children. So if you do, this is if you answer yes, this is where you enter kids fiance right here. So in my case, it does not have it. She does not have kids. Address in the United States where your beneficiary tend to live. This is the tricky question. This is basically this is the address of the petitioner. So it's gonna be 105, Robert Run. Hey, do not, just I wanna give you an uh, advice right here. Do not put a different address than a petitioner. It will raise a lot of questions. Don't do that. It has to be the same address as the petitioner. So let's go to the qu next question. Indianapolis. State is gonna be Indiana. Is a four six two two one is a phone number. It's gonna be a petitioner phone number three one seven. Your beneficiary physical address abroad. You already put it right here, but they still asking for it right here. It's gonna be the same as address. If you, uh, I hope I remember the address. Where is it? The beneficiary is right here one hundred. It's 100. Uh, city or town is Kinefra. Province is Kinefra. Postal code is 54,000. Country is Morocco. Phone number is 00212. Morocco phone number. So your beneficiary name and address in his or her native alphabet. A lot of people miss that one too. You know, a lot of people, you know, they submit the application and they, they, they told me they do not do this. Hey, if you have to do it, I'm going to example, I'm from Morocco, so this has to be in Arabic. I'm not going to do it right now, but it has to be in Arabic. So you go Google. If you don't have a keyboard in Arabic, go to Google and type it and then put in Arabic right here last name first name uh, the address in a uh, native language it has to be in my example it has to be in arabic right here so the country everything is in arabic it's going to be in here i'm sorry i'm going to talk in, uh, in, in moroccan uh, sorry guys here is going to be uh here uh, first name uh, street number uh, city or town postal code and the country all this has to be in arabic so if you have to be if in your native language we're still here talking about part two information about the beneficiary is your fiance related to you it depends what you answer right here in my case is no provide the nature and degree of relationship if you answer yes right here you're gonna say right here if your cousin whatever uncle whatever have you ever have you and your fiance met in person uh, during the two years immediately before finding this form this is very tricky. It doesn't matter what you answer right here. They're going to ask you for more information. If you answer yes, they're going to ask you for your love story. Basically, you got to add, you got to attach a letter, how you met that person, how long you talk to her, and you know, it's going to be a lot of stuff. So you got to prove that you talk to that person every day and uh, submit, you know, additional paper in page eight that and talk about how you met that person if in, in in person but if you did not it's the same thing you gotta explain why you did not met the person you're gonna give circumstances why you did not met that person in that two years so this is what you're gonna do that if you answer yes you're gonna give explanation right here if you answer no you're gonna give explanation right here it's, it's very simple just you gotta write it how you met that person in how you met that person in person your fiance in person or why you didn't met why you didn't meet your uh, fiance in person? So you're gonna give explanation right here. Uh, fifth, uh, international marriage broker. We did not use any. So if you do, you're gonna answer these questions right here for the marriage broker. A lot of people use that one. 
it's like apps some people do that so organization you're gonna give this website if you have a website yeah uh, oh, we're not gonna do we're not gonna use this so I, we did not use this so consular processing information your beneficiary will apply for visa abroad at USA embassy or US consulate at in my example it's gonna be Casablanca and the country is gonna be Morocco other information and yeah, just criminal record you're gonna answer yes uh, just uh, check the one that applies for you have you ever been subject to a temporary or permanent protection or restraining order no just read this in my case no domestic violence sexual assault child abuse no to be no three or more arrests or conviction no if you do that you can answer this 3a 3b and 3c in my case no have you ever been arrested no uh, if uh, please read this very carefully and answer them if the answer to item 4a if ye is, is yes provide you're gonna give explanation right here uh, multiple fire waiver request information this one is a little bit confusing but it's self-explanatory so the only the one that apply for us is 5d is not applicable or the beneficiary if you are filing k3 visa it's a beneficiary is my spouse or i am not a multi a multiple filer so uh, not hispanic or latino is bio biographic information is part four uh, white is north african uh, five eight uh, it's gonna be 175 pound it's black eye color hair color is black uh, just check one to apply for you this is just a uh, very simple thank part 5 petitioner statement contact information declaration and certification and signature this is what I want to explain if you use the interpreter if somebody help you was beside you helping you no, first we're gonna talk about 1A. I don't know why I'm going to 1B. 1A. If you find this by yourself, nobody help you. Choose 1A. Part 1A. If somebody helped you, even if you felt this by yourself, but somebody helped you, you're gonna check this as well. Interpreters named in Part 6. Or at my request, somebody fill it out for you. Like if somebody, you do that. I never knew that. I didn't know that one. I thought you can do both. So, one, if you use interpreters named in part six, read to me every question and instruction on this, uh, on this petition, I may answer to every question. We did not use any interpreters and we did not use any prepare. So, part uh, seven and part six is not going to be used. Petitioner contact information is a daytime phone number, it's 317. It's same as mobile phone number. Uh, Gmail is a... Uh, B, br at gmail.com uh, it's a uh, comma so petitioner declaration and certification we're still talking about that all information was completed through please read this and certify that under penalty of uh, pre-jury that all information is correct uh, petitioner signature uh, first, I'm going to date it. Is that uh, what date today? 05 uh, 22 2023. This is a tricky one right here. Please, I'm going to beg you again do not sign it with a black ink, or I'm sorry, do not sign it with any other color than black ink. It has to be a black ink. Do not write your full name and do not initial it. It has to be a black ink. Sign it with ink when you, when you file it branch it then sign it with a black ink so as i said we did not use any interpreters so it can be blank or in a and we did not use any uh and we did not use the prepare so it's going to be as well blank or uh or in a in case you use them they have to sign it the same way you sign it it must be printed and dated and then sign it by black black ink when you print it uh, for the additional page I already have a video for that one so I already have a video for this uh, part right here if you need to watch it uh, it will be uh, said it will it will be my, in my videos if you want to watch it uh, this is the end of this video I hope you like it 
If you do, please subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell. Thank you, and see you in the next video.